Hello everyone, Treeks here, and welcome back to Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. This is going to be part 6. And because of it being part 6, we're not going to be following the soldier with the green beret anymore. <laughs> that is a long time ago, we already know how to get past the jungle. We've already been in the building behind it, the tower building. There we found the codec frequency we needed to use in order to talk to Dr. Marv. Perhaps he was able to tell us where he is. However, we were not able to understand him because he's only speaking Czech and Slovakian. And both languages we are not able to understand, so... <laughs> we needed a different way to actually talk to him. Find ourselves a translator. And even that we are able to actually do because Dr. Madnar actually pointed us in the right direction. He came here under the protection of an STB agent, Gustava. And she actually does speak Czechoslovakian and therefore we can use her to talk to Dr. Marv. <laughs> But first we need to find her. She's also in disguise right now, in Zanzibar land. In fact, in the Zanzibar building. That's the reason why we're back here. And we need to find her. Oh! I should be paying better attention, I'm just walking into enemy soldiers now. <laughs> but anyway, she uh, is a woman, and therefore can be easily found. Difficult to recognize because of her wearing an enemy uniform. But she still needs to go to the bathroom at some point. <laughs> And actually catching her, going towards the woman's restroom, that is going to be our chance to try to find her. And that is how this is going to work. Hopefully we're going to be out of alert mode the moment I get to the elevator. Hi there. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's go. We need to go to the third floor again. Even though we did already explore the third floor, the moment we were still looking for Dr. Marv. Back in this building and actually found out it was a trap. <laughs> but we actually did not fully explore this um, floor yet. There's one door we weren't able to enter. The door on the left over there. <laughs> that one actually requires keycard number four. So it was not an option yet to actually check that place out. But now we do have it and therefore this is where we're going to continue searching. One quick thing of note. In case you get confused, we're actually not going to find Gustava on this floor yet. We are just here for some other things. <laughs> well, this also needs to happen, of course. This first part of the western side of the third floor is going to be a lot of goodie rooms. If you go on this one, we'll actually find some rations, apparently. We are full on those. Um, this is a B3 one by the looks of it, so let's use one so we can carry one. And we're also full health again. <laughs> now, going in here. This is going to be a long stretch of corridors, only going to lead to one item. A bit unfortunate that we need to go out of our way so much, but this is also just going to be for one item. And therefore this is also kind of uh, a goodie room still. <laughs> There's a guard here. I don't think we're going to be impressed. <laughs> More rooms. And here we are, here's the item we were looking for. This is a mouse. A not required item uh, to actually get in the game, but it is a unique item. We'll be able to find it in more places. But this is actually a dummy robot that can be used to disable noise mode. Can be a pretty uh, helpful item, I can guess. However, I usually have no problem uh, getting rid of alert mode in other ways, so <laughs> I usually don't use the mouse. There's also one in that room over there, as you can see. <laughs> like I said, a non required item. If you want to say this game is 100% complete, I guess you do need at least one of them in your inventory. It is a unique item after all. One we can also find over here. Might as well pick it up. So, that takes care of that. Um, next, we want to go towards this one over here. Careful for the guards. Okay, that guy's going down. And you? You're going up. Okay, also good. Gives me the ability to go in here. <laughs> um, oh, no items, just a little girl. I hate people who use guns. And I hate rooms that don't have any guns. <laughs> Completely useless chamber. Let's just ignore it, okay? Moving on to the next one. Here's a sensor. It's pretty obvious it is here, so please don't get uh, caught by it. 
In this room we can actually find some mines. Don't think we actually need any of those, but... Um... Oh! Not too sure what uh, made the alarm go off, but... Uh... <laughs> It is going off, and apparently this is also a gas room. During alert mode, it is also going to be filled with gas, apparently, this room. And... There we go. The heat is gone again. <laughs> Stupid sensor. I'm pretty sure it was the sensor that actually went off. <laughs> Let's go in this door. Red card, apparently. A uh, new type of missile. Or, uh, new. It's returning from the first game. <laughs> we should know them. These are radio-controlled missiles. Remember, the ones that we can actually uh, steer the moment we um, fire them. Apparently, also makes a return in this game. And this is where we can find them for the first time. And that actually uh, clears out everything in this section. And that's something we needed to take care of quickly. <laughs> Move down here. There's also a door that unlocked on this area. Even though we've been here before. We can actually check out a different section now. Last time we went through the upper door. Going towards the cell where we uh, then still believe Dr. Marv was. <laughs> but there's also a lower door over here. That actually opens up with card number 3 I'm pretty sure. A card we did not have yet at least. The moment we were here last time. Let's go see where this actually leads. This door over here. This one is closed, so this one requires card number uh, four. Ooh, this is interesting. A dark room. Darkness has taken over. <laughs> However, there is a light switch over here. So we can press it. This room is not too special, as you can see. It's just here to introduce us to the light switch mechanic. Press the button, and the lights can either go on or off. It's going to be used in this section. That's obvious, right? <laughs> Now, if we go into the next room, we will find out there's a corridor filled with guards. Apparently there's something important they're guarding here, but... Um, they're facing the wrong way, and therefore they're easily dispatched off. <laughs> so, um... Going into the next room. Which does not open up, so I need to switch cards again. <laughs> um, looks like you're just going to walk right into my fist. Like this. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be trap floors over here. Better be careful. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> right before the goggles. Not infrared goggles this time around. This is going to be night vision goggles. So we're able to see in the dark. There are going to be some places in this game where we actually need them. Not every single dark place in this game is going to have a light switch. <laughs> this one actually still has, so let's put the lights off. And actually show how this looks. Awesome, right? But of course, it only works in the dark. The moment you uh, equip the night vision goggles while the lights are on, you won't see any difference. This is only to help us see in the dark. Something we're going to need. Otherwise, our trip to the next floor is going to be a problem. Okay, I'm not going to care about my oxygen meter here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to live. <laughs> it's not a long trip. We're here already. Even though it is close. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> How are you doing today, sir? And why did you put the lights off? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I kind of misremembered that. But apparently the guards here actually also um, can put out the lights. That's probably the reason why they are also wearing uh, night vision goggles. <laughs> but anyway, we are done here. Now that we have the night vision goggles... We can actually start looking for Gustava. It is time for us to move on to the next floor. The first three have been covered fully. It is time for us to step into the elevator and push the up button one more time. The sensor bar building has a fourth floor. Two brothers on the fourth floor. <laughs> oh, let's not talk about Snake's brothers quite yet. <laughs> fourth floor. Not a whole lot of places we can go. There's only a doorway to the left. But this is indeed going to be the floor where we can find Gustava. Because uh, this is actually the floor where we can find the restrooms. <laughs> Let's go actually try to explore this floor. Starts off with a sensor. 
also a guard, but the guard actually walks uh, away from us, so <laughs> he's not going to be a problem. I'm going to assume he's not going to face a different way now, and therefore I don't want to take any risk. As we wait for him to come back and try to move into the next screen the moment he enters ours. Nope, too early. <laughs> it was a nice try. In theory, that should be able to work, actually. <laughs> Like we should actually miss each other in the screen transition. But I think you need perfect timing for that. <laughs> that is obvious. Now, uh, let's try to avoid these guys. Hide behind the plant. Let this guy walk into my fist. <laughs> and evasion mode is over. Now, continuing on this floor. Um, this looks like a dead end. The only thing we can actually find here is another conversation with the kid. <laughs> the grown-ups always stand at attention when they hear the national anthem. It is one of their weird rules. Yeah, but this is going to be a very good advice as well. That this is something we're going to be able to use later on. <laughs> the adults always have to stand up the moment they hear the national anthem of Zanzibar Land. <laughs> now, let's continue on the main pathway. Immediately get spotted by a guard. Because I'm of course not paying attention. <laughs> Always forget to check my radar. It's getting crowded in here. Way too many soldiers in this building. Run away, run away. <laughs> I'm not very good at stealth. I'm just going to run my way through all of the soldiers. <laughs> Also still a good strategy to use. Hide behind the wall and just punch them to death. <laughs> Alright, what can we find in here? More advice from children. Starting to become a normal thing now. There's only one bathroom here. It's on the southeast side of this floor. But I'm too scared to go there at night. Ah, oh, I'm scared of the night as well. But I've got night vision goggles now. <laughs> so I don't think I have to worry. But it is going to be a hint on the fact that we are going to need night vision goggles on this floor. Soon, we're going to be entering the darkness. And without a way to see, we're not going to be able to actually move past it. I can already promise you. If you catch a cold, go to the infirmary and they'll give you some medicine. Hmm, a cold. Is there status ailments in this game? Really? <laughs> Perhaps we'll actually learn more about that later. Alright, here's the darkness, I actually promise you. And unlike the rooms we actually saw on the fourth floor, this one is not going to be as easy to get past if you're not able to see. Because there's a part where we need to crawl, as you can see. And I'm pretty sure there's also going to be a trap floor here somewhere, so be careful. I'll try to talk to this girl. There's a bunch of soldier mannequins in there. Soldier mannequins. Hmm. Therefore saying, if we actually enter the next room, you might actually get scared for a moment, because... There's a lot of soldiers here. <laughs> However, like the girl said, they're all fake. They're all mannequins. I guess this is something they're using for their uh, Zanzibar Land propaganda or something like that. <laughs> we don't have to be scared for them. However, in the next room, things actually become complicated. <laughs> because there's actually going to be some real soldiers hiding among the mannequins. It's going to make traversing this place a bit more complicated. Luckily, we are able to see whether they are real, because they actually stand a bit differently. And they also show up on our radar. So the moment we see something blinking, we know it's a real soldier. Don't get surprised by them. <laughs> In the next room, things actually become even more complicated, because now there's even more guys standing. Check your radar, look which ones are blinking, and try to take those out. Or simply avoid them if you're able to. <laughs> However, I'm not going to take any risk. Take you out. This guy to the right, and the one standing above him. Those were the real soldiers here. Next room. Keycard number four. Welcome to the mess hall. Yeah, all of these soldiers also need to eat. <laughs> Where do you think all these rations come from? <laughs> However, there's also going to be patrols here, of course. And this is not going to be an empty mess hall. There's soldiers running around here. Two of them on the right side for the looks of it. Let's just go down here. 
Oh, come on. Get away from me. <laughs> this room I want to go into. Something we can actually pick up here. Rations. However, frozen rations, as you can see. This is actually the cooling cell, you might say. Remember this place. This is the one place in the game where it's actually really cold. Remember that. We're going to be needing that for later. <laughs> but for now, we are not here for the cold. We are here for the restroom. The men and the women's restroom. Both can be found here. Let's just go in the men's room first. Not really something we need to do here for the story, but we do have an item we can pick up over here, as you can see. <laughs> this is a bucket. It is going to be interesting for us in a minute. Make sure to pick it up already. Next up is going to be a waiting game. As you can see, there's one particular soldier that's going to enter the ladies' room. Because it is going to be the only soldier in this entire building that is actually a woman. <laughs> so we need to wait for her to actually go in the ladies' room and then we can actually confront her. We're not able to do it uh, in the mess hall itself, of course. <laughs> there's going to be way too many other soldiers running around. That will blow her cover. And ours. <laughs> so we need to wait until she returns. Make sure we're not spotted, of course. If she sees us the moment she's trying to enter, she's going to get scared and will walk away again. We need to make sure we stay out of sight and follow her the moment she goes in. And that's what we need to do. And then we would have found our little translator. It might take a while. She just actually uh, exited the place, so... <laughs> Unfortunately, it might take a while before she comes back. I'm pretty sure it takes... Uh, couple of minutes before she makes her entire round again. This might be her again, the soldier we see on the radar. <laughs> She's of course not the only soldier running around here. Yeah, the soldier is coming to the right. Into our screen even. Need to make sure I'm not spotted. Are you a man, or are you a woman? <laughs> are you going to enter the men's room? No, not the men's room. There's nobody around, you can safely go into the ladies' room, and nobody is going to spot you <laughs> going in there. <laughs> Except for us. Let's go. And here she is, the only place where she dares to put out her uniform. Let's go confront her. Gustava? Yes, that's me. I am Gustava Hefner of the STB. And you must be Solid Snake. We're after the same thing. Why don't we work together to save Dr. Marv? Have we met somewhere before? Hmm, typical Western man. Always ready with a pickup line. <laughs> Now I remember. You're Gustava Hefner, the Ice Princess. You took the gold at the Calgary Olympics. You must be mistaken. I don't think so. I know I have... Enough of this. What about Dr. Marth? I made contact with him over the radio. But he doesn't speak English. Then he is safe. Good. I'm glad he had that surgery to implant the microtransmitter. Snake, lend me your radio. The frequency is 140.51. And then these two are going to have a conversation in check. <laughs> Let's see if I'm able to um, kinda guess what they're talking about. Hello, Doctor. How do you feel? Thank you. I feel good. You look good too. Where are you, Doctor? In the north, where there is a giant cliff. There is a concentration camp there. That's where I am. We will save you. I am grateful. Thank you. Snake, Dr. Marth is safe, for now. He says there's a large crevice to the north of the tower building. The prison is on the other side. Dr. Marv also expressed concern about Dr. Madnar. Don't worry, Madnar is safe. Right now, we have to get Marv out of there. 
got it. Now what are we going to do? <laughs> I know a shortcut to the crevice. There's an old sewer running under here. We can take that elevator down. Let's go. Whoa, there's an elevator there? What do you know? <laughs> an elevator in the ladies' room. <laughs> Unexpected. Let's go see where it actually brings us. The old sewers. Sounds interesting. B3. The deepest point we have reached so far in this game. A shortcut to the crevice, north of the tower building. However, I think it's a good idea to start exploring this place in the next episode. <laughs> We've been going on for long enough. This is a perfect place, because of this also being a checkpoint, to actually call it quits for now. We've got Gustava actually following us at this point in the game. And next time, we're going to actually bring her to the concentration camp, north of the tower building. Apparently, these sewers actually lead there. And then we are finally going to be able to find Dr. Marv. Things are actually finally looking up for us. Thanks for watching and treaks out.